All right, this is a continuation from section 8.4. We're starting at question seven here. So <clears throat> question 7a gives us a fractional coefficient of one half n. Oh, I'll get rid of that. One half n plus two or is equal to two fifths plus a fifth of n. So the first thing I want to do, and, and you don't have to do this, and I, I want to stress that there's multiple ways to solve these equations. I'm just showing you what I consider to be the easiest way of solving it. Is that we need to think of a half of n if I was to write a half of n. If I think about pictorially, if that's n, that's n. I could also say half of n, and more importantly, I could say n divided by 2, or you can also read that as being half of n. Given that all four of those are the same thing, what I want to do is I want to transfer it so that I don't really have the fractional coefficient, but I'm thinking of it as being that as the fractional coefficient, or half of n. So I'm going to change that first term to that. It doesn't no math equals uh, two fifths plus the same thing happens here for a fifth of n. If I think about what it is, it's a fifth of n, which would be n divided into five parts, which would be uh, 0.2n, a fifth of n, which is equal to n over five. So given all of those, I'm going to write it as n over five. And the reason why I'm doing that is because in the last particular question, we talked about this balance of equality. And if I was to have fractions, I know that when I multiply a fraction by a common multiple of the denominator, I end up with no fractions. So multiplying both sides by five will get rid of these fractions, but it won't get rid of this term. So instead of multiplying both sides by five, if I multiply both sides by a common multiple of the denominators, so if I think about two and five, two, four, six, Multiplying both terms by a common multiple, which in this case is 10, will result or should result in no fractions, right? So I'm going to take this side, I'm going to multiply this whole side, which is just this one term by 10. I'm going to put brackets around this to remind myself that both of these terms, both this one and this one, have to be multiplied by 10. Now, if I think about that half of n multiplied by 10, I could either multiply the numerators to get 10n divided by 2, which is still going to give me 5n, right? Alternatively, if I wanted to get that 5n without multiplying, I could have crossed reduced here to get 10 over 2 is 5 over 1. And then when I multiply my numerators, I get 5n, and the denominators become 1, which don't exist. The next part is 2 fifths multiplied by, uh, let me just grab this here before we bring it down just a bit. So 10 over 1, or 10, multiplied by 2 fifths is going to be 20 over 5, or 4. And if I cross-reduce it, I also get 4, regardless of how I looked. But 2 fifths multiplied by 10 is 4. And 10 multiplied by n over 5 is 10n over 5, or 2n, right? So plus 2n. So now I've taken this rather complex equation, and by simply multiplying both sides by 10, I've created all of my terms that don't have fractional coefficients or fractional constants anymore. And because that's true, I can really solve this a lot more efficiently and a lot easier. So I'll bring it back up here. And I'm just going to simply look at it. Okay, I have variables on both sides. I'm going to get rid of 2n from both sides so that I now only have variables on one side, which is 3n equals 4. Divide both sides by 3. And n will equal 1 and 1 third, or if you want to put it to a decimal, 1 decimal 3 repeated. With b, it's a lot easier because you don't have that fractional problem. You just have basic algebra, just the procedures of getting rid of everything. So with variables on both sides. Now I could subtract 0.3w from both sides. But the only problem is that becomes zero and it doesn't really help me a whole lot because I'm really working towards isolating this variable. I want to get that variable by itself. So I am going to add, oh, that's actually counterintuitive to what I just said. I'm going to add 0.2w to both sides. So I got rid of the whole thing, which left me with negative 1.1 on this side. However, my variable has simply switched sides. Since those are like terms, I'm going to combine a 0.3 coefficient with a 0.2 coefficient to give me 0.5w. All right. So by simply adding 0.2 to both sides, I end up with a much simpler equation. Now that I have that, I'm going to divide both sides by my coefficient. If I think about this, a dollar ten divided into piles of fifty cents, I can make two in a bit. W is isolated because notice how I didn't create a zero pair; I just divided to get rid of the coefficient, and I'm left with W. 
at 1.1, let's bring this over here, 1.1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2.2, negative 2.2. For question D, uh, oh, this is a little tricky. So if I think about this as being an algebraic term, uh, 1 minus E, and instead of just be E, it's going to be 1 minus E. How much of that do I have? I actually have half of it. So I'm going to first think of this as being half of, half of 1 minus E. So if this is 1 minus E, half of it will be this. These are the same expression. So half of 1 minus E or half of that. It's equal to, and again, I don't like this fractional coefficient, so I'm going to think of it as an improper fraction first, and then I'm going to think of it as 7e over 6, okay? So my first step, although it's very difficult, is to think of it as being that, because, of course, just to remind you, it's 7 over 6 multiplied by e over 1, which would end up being 7e over 6, okay? All right, so once that's done, once I've changed it to a more digestible equation, I'm like, okay, I have two sides, I have variables on both sides, but I have fractions still. So I'm going to multiply by a common multiple of the denominator, which in this, in this case is 6. And over here, I'm going to multiply by 6. 6 over 1 multiplied by 1 minus e over 2. If I don't cross-reduce, if I don't cross-reduce, I have to multiply 6 by the numerator, so 6 multiplied by 1 minus e, uh, which will be, using distributive property, will be 6 minus 6e over 2. And then once I do that, I'm like, oh, that didn't help me because that's still... So then I have to divide both terms by 2, and I'm going to get 3 minus 3e as a final answer. But that stinks because it's not a very efficient way of doing it. What you want to do is you want to say, I can cross-reduce. So 6 over 2 will reduce down to 3 over 1. So you can see now my denominators are gone. I just have 1 as a denominator, so I don't have to worry about it. I just have to multiply the numerators now. So I have to multiply a 3 by 1 minus e, which is going to be 3 minus 3e. Don't forget when you multiply, in this case, a binomial by a monomial, you need to utilize distributive property. Okay. So what I do it that way, give you a second to copy that down. 3, 2, 1, copy down, good. So once you've done that, your this side here becomes 3 minus 3e. And over here, 6 multiplied by 7e over 6, cross-reduce. We see how that's going to be just a 7e. So now, we started with this equation. And by simply multiplying both sides by 6, I've created an infinitely easier question to work with. There's no fractions here. It's got variables on both sides. Yeah, that's true but it's much easier to work with, right? So I'm going to add 3e to both sides, not to get rid of the coefficient, but to get rid of that entire term. And 3 will equal 10e. Now that I have this one, just divide both sides by the coefficient. And e will equal 3 tenths or 3 tenths. Ta -da! Question eight looks complicated, but it's not bad. Um, you have variables on both sides, and thankfully it's decimal form, so we don't have to worry about the fraction stuff. Um, now, intuition would say from grade seven and eight, get rid of the constant first, but because you have variables on both sides, I'm going to elect to get rid of the 2.1k by subtracting 2.1k. I'm not getting rid of the coefficient of it, I'm getting rid of the entire term by creating an algebraic zero term, zero pair. So 2.6 will equal 1.5 plus, remember when you do this, you're combining like terms. So when you do so, you keep the variable and just combine the coefficients. That's going to be 2.2k. So 2.2k when I combine those terms. Now it looks very manageable. I have a constant, I have a equivalent value of a constant and I have a coefficient. I'm working towards isolating the variable k. So I'm going to subtract my constant from both sides. Uh, giving me 1.1 is equal to 2.2k. Now that I have that, I just have one more step to get rid of the coefficient. $1.10 divided into piles of $2.20 means a half a pile. 
So I know my answer is going to be k equals 0 0.5 because I got good estimation of decimal sense. But 1.1 divided by 2.2 equals 0.5 and k equals 0 0.5. In question B, uh, I do have fractions, and by now you're realizing I hate these. I hate those very much, so I want to rewrite those. So before I do any kind of math, I'm going to rewrite it as instead of a sixth of P, I'm going to write a sixth of P like that, minus 5 equals. Instead of writing a half a P, I'm going to write a half a P like this. So this looks good. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting somewhere. I now know that I have fractions, and I know that my teacher told me that, you know, if you don't like fractions, don't use them. So my denominators in my entire equation are 6 and 2. A common multiple that 6 and 2 share is 6. So I'm going to multiply this side by 6, which is both. This is going to be multiplied by 6, and this is going to be multiplied by 6. And this side is going to be multiplied by 6, using distributive property. So remember... When I multiply both sides by 6, I'm not going to compromise the equality. It maintains balance. A sixth P multiplied by 6 will be a full P. And a negative 5 multiplied by P 6 will be negative 30. A half of P multiplied by 6 will be 3P. And a 2 multiplied by 6 will be 12. Okay? So now I have something much simpler looking than this original equation. And I'm like, I can do this. This is no problem. Hold on, before I get rid of my constants, I do have variables on both sides. I'm going to get rid of this P by not dividing by 1, but simply subtracting a P from both sides. Leave me with negative 30 equals, like terms, combine them, a negative 1 coefficient and a positive 3 makes a, a positive 2 coefficient. Now we have a grade 7 question. I'm going to subtract, actually a grade 8 question, I suppose. Subtract 12 from both sides. Uh, get rid of the constant. I have 2p equals negative 42. And finally, dividing both sides by 2 will give me p equals negative 21. And that's my solution to that equation. Okay, p equals negative 21.